to order uh, the September 12 meeting of the Montpelier Planning Commission. First, we have to approve the agenda. Um, so when folks are ready, we'll take a motion for that. So moved. A motion second. to approve the agenda. Motion to approve from John and a second from Ariane. Those in favor of approving the agenda say aye. 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 Okay. Agenda approved. Uh, and moving on to comments from the chair. Um, I have a few quick things, uh, some of which we're going to get into a bit later. Uh, first thing I think is most important right now is we, we're going to have two open seats with uh, Jeff leaving. So uh, everyone should try to recruit people that we want to work with. Um, so we have some control. Um, and as I think, as we know, like things go pretty smoothly if we're, um, if we have good chemistry. So, so try to recruit folks who are good to work with. Um, and since there's two seats and we've had a trouble filling Stephanie's seat, uh, I think the recruitment could be really important. Um, you know, we're, we're about to finish up the city plan. And I think that's what we're going to be doing the next month or two. Um, uh, and then start transitioning over to the, the digital side of it. Um, I do plan to draft that outreach related to the solar shading soon. It's been a few months, a couple months since uh, the bridge published our last outreach thing. Um, so, so I do anticipate working on that soon. And uh, speaking of the bridge, uh, I don't know if folks know this, but over the summer, they accidentally re-ran a commentary from last spring, which was um, the member of the public who wrote a commentary kind of attacking what we were doing back then in our zoning suggestions. So, <laughs> I, don't, I mean, I, I don't know. It was kind of news. It was, it was brought to my attention from, from people from the public. Uh, but so we got kind of bad press that was just an accident over the summer. So, so that's fun. Uh, but it was an accident, and I don't know if you know anything more about it, Mike, but I just thought I'd let everybody know that it happened. Um, no such thing as bad press, right? <laughs> Except for maybe some of it. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. <laughs> uh, we're notorious, I guess. Uh, so, and the ironic thing was when I reached out to the bridge, they um, they had wanted me to include something and in, in, the commentary like praising the bridge on on publishing like pro housing articles but the only thing that i was aware of that they've published is the commentary that bashes the planning commission's efforts to be pro housing so i was like i don't I actually don't think i want to bring that up but maybe maybe that will change in the future bridge okay that's that's it from the comments does anybody have any news or announcements okay well we're gonna move on then uh and uh next is general business i'm not seeing anyone from the public so we'll cruise through that and then mike will give us the official reminder about appointments for for some members Spoiler, it's me and Gabe. Yep, that's pretty much it. It's uh, Kirby and Gabe are the two that are getting, uh, well, there are four seats, but Marcella and Jeff were the other two that would be getting reappointed. So Marcella is obviously gone and Jeff has uh, opted not to get reappointed. So uh, we'll have at least uh, those two vacant seats. So we'll try to go and see. I have one person who has contacted me who... Um, has planning experience, I think would be a good addition, um, who has uh, expressed some interest in being on the board. So we'll see if she ends up applying. Um, other than that, we'll still have an extra seat open. Yeah, great. Everybody reach out to folks in your circles. Um, the next thing on the agenda is... Uh, update on the city plan contract with SE group. 
Um, go for it, Mike. All right. I mean, I could probably do a quick update for six and eight um, because they're both really about upcoming meetings. Uh, so I, I have met with SE Group. We've got a contract written. We are, um, they've started work on, on pieces. So they're starting to put together the template. Basically what we had agreed on to start was to put together some um, template pages for the, uh, basically the arc hub, the way that is structured, it's gonna, it comes out in pages. So they're gonna um, start putting together some of those pages uh, just as a template. So we can approve that, go through, you know, I told them we've typically kind of started with the historic resources because it's a pretty straightforward one. They liked our chapters as we kind of put them together. You know, I, I know we kind of broke them into pieces and knew they were going to eventually kind of have to get mishmashed together, but they thought when they reviewed what we have on the drive, they were pretty happy with what was there. There's going to be a lot of small pieces. So, um, I do have a uh, an intern again for this fall, so uh, I'm hopeful that this is going to be uh, another uh, another good experience where I can get somebody to kind of work on things. But we also may, depending on who has some time, um, if anyone has time and is interested, they're going to probably be looking for little things here and there, maybe pictures, maybe uh, those types of things, somebody to review it. Um, we're also going to, uh, at some point, create a, uh, I guess I'll call it like a, kind of an, an accessibility uh, review. So it'll be part of the beta testing of the site is, is um, it, it, you know, it may be a member of the planning commission that may, if there's somebody who's got some time, but what we want to be able to do is to start to get people who, um, whether uh, it's it's to test it for for ADA accessibility, making sure we've got the fonts and the readabilities and the colors and all those pieces all kind of work. Uh, so they they're talking about having a group that would kind of take a look at things and test things out, make sure everything works. It's not really a content reviewer as much as it is kind of a site tester to make sure things work. And so I'll be working with them to kind of set up a small committee to review um, to make sure that you know, fonts are big enough that things scroll and work correctly. Um, so that'll be another piece. So we've worked on a, a bunch of logistics with them. Um, I do know they they would like at some point to meet with you, John. Uh, we'll have to try to see if, you know, if we could set up some time because they, they are mostly what they're working on is the chapter pieces that we kind of work on last. Um, and then we had seen some things from John last year, two years ago now, on how we could potentially put together our implementation strategies, you know, in the table formats. So they're kind of interested in seeing um, a little bit of the ideas that you had to see how they might be able to mesh into our overall website. So sounds good. Yep. Yeah. So I think that's about it. Um, like I said, I think it's a, a really good group that SE has put together. Um, so they're actually all over the country. They're all working remotely. So um, they they had a couple of folks who were in town. So I got to meet with them for the kickoff meeting. And we've had uh, two other meetings now virtually, but they're ones in Maine, ones in Colorado. So um, it's been pretty positive at this point. Uh, the number eight um, upcoming meeting with HPC. Um, so the Historic Preservation Commission had been working on uh, the design review guide, and they had a, they had gotten a certified local government contract uh, grant to put together. Um, every everybody remembers we did new design review rules, and one of them was and, you know one of the little things in there was like you know we'll have a new guideline design review guide, and so they've been working for the past two years on putting that together, and it's kind of an um, again an online system. Um, I think this one is in one of the Adobe Illustrator or something like that. It's a, but it's a pretty nice, they did a really nice job putting it together to kind of go through and kind of one of those, we want to see this, not this, we want to see this, not this type discussions. You know, when we talk about fenestration, what is fenestration? When we talk about, um, you know, and it kind of goes through and explains all the pieces of what we're trying to do and why it's important. Um, but they're guidelines, um, but they still kind of need to be, 
they don't need to be adopted, but they do need to be approved. So uh, they want to come and show you that design guide. Um, and they're, they they wanted to meet October 24th at our meeting on the 24th. So SE Group will be coming on the 11th. So a month from today, a uh, month from yesterday. And um, HPC will be meeting on the 24th. So that'll be about six weeks. So if anyone has any questions on either one of those, I can kind of go into the, get into those. Uh, Mike, can you just give me, just drag my memory. Where, where are we with the timeline with SE at this point? It is just getting kicked off. So they, uh, we just signed the contract with them. Uh, they are trying to get done, you know, relatively quick. We've got, I think, until October of next year to, to expend all the money that is in the grant. Their schedule is to try to be done getting through most of the heavy lifting by the end of the winter. So they want to be starting to, you know, we, we need to handle the public outreach but obviously we can't really do the outreach without having the documents ready. So it's going to be kind of a little bit of, we're going to be working with them as they go through, they're going to put together some, some drafts. We're going to go out to the public, um, revise those drafts, but they want to have most of their heavy lifting done before the end of the winter. So we'll say March, April, understanding that we're of course going to be going through a lot of public input, um, and how long that takes always depends on the public. Uh, if we're pretty close on what we've been writing up, and I don't think we've written anything that's outrageously uh, controversial. So I don't think we're, you know, um, unless somebody really wants to come in and start picking little things. Uh, I, I don't expect a lot of pushback on most of what's in there. But um Obviously, once we've got the big picture done, then we can kind of just wait and get through the public process as we review things. And obviously, there's going to be some changes of policy here and there, some word changing here and there. Um, but hopefully, that's all wrapped up by, you know, um, the end of October next year. So, you know, if we're warning public hearings this time next year for adoption of the city plan, I'd be really happy. And that's their plan. That's our plan. And and in the short term, what do we have left to give them in advance of their heavy lifting? And what is there a timeline for us that we need to be thinking about? To get uh, we're, yeah, the end of the so the really we we want to be as quickly as possible getting through to the end end of things. Um, depending on how much, I mean, we can do a really quick review of utilities and facilities. That's, that's basically, that's been done for, I, I just haven't had a chance to review it with the people in DPW. Other than that, that part's done. Um, arts, we still need the written chapter, Kirby. So we've gotten the uh, implementation strategy done, but we'll need a written, the written chunks done on that one. And then we've got community services, which we've got a lot of draft, a lot of it is drafted, um, but I don't have the written chapter, but the implementation strategy um, and public safety is the only one that really hasn't had a lot of work done um, and, and land use, but land use, I've actually been talking with SE group and they've got some really interesting ideas for how we can work on that. And they think some of the tools that arc hub has in it um can really help us help you and i work together to put together the the land use plan because we really think that's um that's one that's really kind of where we pull everything together uh and as we talk about you know these maintain evolve transform um, we can really kind of get into each you know they're like we could zoom into each neighborhood and kind of do a really quick thing of how each neighborhood is doing and that would give us a, a good both detailed you know whether you're zoomed in or zoomed out you can kind of get a pretty good sense of where each neighborhood is doing um, with respect to certain things and we would just have to go through and say we can't review it for every goal but we could pick you know six or seven key indicators that we want to look at for each neighborhood um, 
you know, our, is this neighborhood within a 10 minute walk of a park? Uh, does this neighborhood have complete streets? Does this neighborhood have, you know, whatever the, you know, the, the feature is that we want to go and call out as the most important features and then do a quick assessment of each um, in a land use and that'll help us drive the implementation strategy of it. You know, what needs to be changed and what needs to be the same. So that was just an idea that they had that I had that we may use. So really the two that need the most work that haven't really been started, public safety, which actually technically isn't a required chapter. I still would like to do it um, and land use. Um, the trick with public safety has been, um, I, I've can, I can get plenty of time with the fire chief, but the police chief, they are so understaffed right now that the police chief is, is doing um, patrols. Uh, it's a pretty, it, they're, they're pretty tight. I think they're down, they've got, they're supposed to have 17 officers. I think they got 12. So I think they're, they're really down, which is um, very difficult for me to then go and sit down like, Hey, let's have a conversation about the master plan and policing. Um, so we'll see if, if, and how that's going to, that, that chapter will play out. But the other ones I'm pretty confident on, I've got a lot of that together. And as we said, we've got nine of them already done, eight of them already done. It's just down to the last handful. I think that's helpful. So the worst case scenario with public safety, Mike, is that maybe we just don't have that chapter since it's not statutory requirement. Yeah, that would be the that would be the worst case is that we go through and and just explain to the city council that, you know, and we could always, you know, I mean, in a lot of senses, we can, we can also just kind of bang out a really general one to kind of fill this fill the spot. Um, my hope is that I would like to do the master plan in a very similar manner to what we do the zoning regulations. I think I've mentioned this in the past that I don't want to be doing the master plan once every eight years. I really would like to take a piece of it. And, you know, we would have a discussion now that our zoning's done and theoretically now that our master plan's done, next year we can go in and say, hey, you know what? I think we should take a more careful look at the, the public safety plan. And, um, you know, that that's a hot topic right now. Let's take a, a, a deeper dive into that revise that plan and go through and do a city plan amendment to kind of update it. So that way, rather than trying to do 12 chapters all at once, which is a huge undertaking um, that we would be able to just kind of start doing it systematically in the same way that we do a zoning update once or twice a year, we'll do a city plan update. Well, it wouldn't be once or twice a year, but you know, maybe once a year we would have a chapter or two that we would be able to update. Um, so I think some of these ones that aren't, fully developed could be some of the ones that we then pick up and say, all right, now that we've got this adopted, let's go back and take a more careful look at public safety um, and really do a deeper dive. That sounds good. Sounds good. Uh, anybody have any more questions for Mike about the uh, city plan in the near future? or the, uh, anything to do with the housing preservation committee's design guide. All righty. Well, we can move on to uh, discussion of the uh, arts and culture strategies. Um, maybe you could pull that up and As far as the chapter goes, Mike, um, I'm I'm open to suggestions if you uh, have an idea of what process you want to take for that. Yeah, I mean, I think the framework you can see the framework and all the others. They all have the same headings. I think it's just a matter of you know we can you and I can have a conversation about how I usually go about my approach but usually the first one the, the the introduction is just about you know what is it and why it's important it's really what i'm trying to get out of the introduction i think we can we can heavily plagiarize 
the arts and culture master plan and um it might go pretty yep. easily if we do that yeah but don't be shy about that i i would take from i always take from other city plans if they have good stuff i think they're chunks of the historic resources that i grabbed from the existing plan so if it if you find something and it sounds good and it sounds like that's what we're that's the expression that we want then I, I remember, I mean, there's, there's intro language and background information in that plan. That's just, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's how it relates. It. I think the next chapter is how it relates to other chapters. I think a lot of that is just taking an intuitive look of, you know, how mm -hmm. does arts relate to economic development? Well, there, I think there's quite a bit of overlap that we could, you know, discuss for, for that in transportation. You know, I think there's a little bit less, but at the same time, there's also, uh, you know, a lot of those ideas that they were talking about for um, and capital projects, integrating art into our capital projects. Most capital mm -hmm. projects that we have in the city are transportation related. So, um, you know, Barry City's gargoyles for bike racks. Um, if you've ever seen those or, you know, there's a different, you know, different things that you can do and build into your, your transportation thing. So I think there's it's a little bit less, but there, there are opportunities there, I think, to, to kind of discuss those where arts, you know, where does arts and housing, probably not much, you know, um, but there's, they're going to be, it's going to be easier and harder on depending on the chapter, you know, art and solar panels for energy. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, there's, I mean, yeah, we're about to jump into it, but some of these strategies do relate to putting art on the backs of pretty much every building. So that way it's going on to housing um, in some places. Okay, I can share. Okay. Um, if I recall, we voted this, we vote on this, right? So we did what, well, and if you were to, um, if anyone looks back into the, the Google drive itself, what you're going to see is, uh, the, the written part, you know, the written part that Kirby put together. And then I did a revised version of that all in all written up because we had made determinations. Hey, let's go from three aspirations to two. Let's combine these. Let's change this, the wording of this one. So I had a bunch of notes. I went through, um, if you go to the aspirations, this is what is on my written. So I converted Kirby's to, to uh, you know, my written form, which helped to get the aspirations and goals. But then when I did the strategies in here, I did, um, that's where I started to combine strategies that were in mine. So I already took Kirby's, um, which I converted to our format. And then I converted our format into the online piece, which required kind of combining strategies into pieces. So we ended up with five Three and three goals for the first strategy, two goals for the second. And I don't know if you guys want to go through and review them, see how close that is to what you guys were thinking. Um, so the first one. Yeah, I'll go back in a sec, Mike. It was just um, okay. Yeah, walk us through it. Just, uh, yeah, I mean, we we've already voted this out, so and and I'm not seeing any reason to to scrutinize it. So just just walk us through, uh, you know, decisions you made. Yeah, you had so you had three aspirations, uh, which were discussed on getting them down to two. The first one is really talking about having public art integrated into our urban landscape. So that is really trying to target public art, that art that is going to appear um, 
you know, uh, in public spaces, publicly owned, uh, as opposed to B, which is kind of looking at art um, that's going to appear in studios, galleries, theaters, other venues. Um, and mostly we break them into two because ultimately the goals and policies to get public art, which is publicly owned, is going to be have different strategies ultimately than the ways of helping to encourage and support studios, galleries, and private art. It's private art that may end up public, but you know, that's, that's the distinction I had with those. We, so we originally had three, went down to two. So the public art, um, increased the amount of lasting public art in public spaces, increased the number of temporary public art installations, festivals, and dynamic performances, and increased the amount of public art and cultural, increased the amount of public art and cultural destinations that are created by celebration or uh, by or celebrate persons of diverse backgrounds. Um, and then the two goals for the venues was kind of maintain and improve the many independent studios, galleries, theaters, and other venues currently in Montpelier and increase the opportunities for affordable art courses for residents through programs provided by the Community Service Center and other departments. So, I pulled all these out based on what was, you know, uh, what I felt was here and looking at the strategies, looking at the, you know, looking above and below, that's kind of, you know, if you've got strategies, then I figure we have to have a goal to support that. So, so I think that one used to have increased opportunities for art classes. Um, so I just tied it to departments. Yeah, just right now I've pulled up the uh, the original ones. Looks like some stuff was consolidated, but looks good to me. Does anybody have any questions for Mike about the aspirations and goals? Um, Mike, you had flagged potential ways to measure. That was just left over from a different, from the template. Okay. So this is all done, but it's, I haven't filled out priorities and costs and goals and everything yet. Um, but this gets again to whether something's going to be new, whether it's continued and expanded. Um, and again, these are not necessarily ones I have a hundred percent supported or encouraged, but these are ones that, that you guys had. So, uh, you know, I'll put in there if there are things that, we think should change that's that's fine too um were there was is there anything with this chapter that you don't feel like you can support uh there are a couple of ones i think that we just have to have more discussion on um some of these ones like um we had a lot of discussion prior about requiring um a percentage of CIP to go towards public art. Um, a number of these just, you know, I think there's some, you know, that's one of the policies, the public art CIP policy. Um, and, and that had been discussed before and it can be, it can be tricky and challenging and it adds costs. So we already have, um, you know, sitting in the CIP budget meetings and sitting in the budget development meetings, when we're talking about going through and saying, all right, we have a, you know, a 600 or 700 or $800,000 budget for capital. And if we start, as we start peeling money away from that, we start losing projects. Um, and again, it's a value statement. Um, and I know public works already feel stretched. They already feel very thin. A lot of their stuff is, you know, paving and sewer lines and water lines and these types of things. And to start, siphoning off 1% or 2% of that to go to the arts is basically decreasing one to 2% of their ability to do capital projects that really need to get done. And that was their, their pushback before when, when this, when the arts commission 
develop that plan that you reviewed and those recommend recommendations were in there, that was a big pushback that DPW said was just that's that's really not viable. You know, we're we're not in a position where we could afford to be siphoning off even twenty, thirty, forty thousand dollars off of our projects um, to add an art component. Um, and as much as it may have a positive benefit, um, when you're this far behind, it was very difficult. And I think there are a couple other ones that I think, you know, overall from a priority standpoint, certainly if you want to implement this, it's going to be important to do some of these things. But as I look across the plan, uh, you know, uh, you know, to, to take money away from, some of these other ones to fund, you know, we can put some money and we do put some money into um, public art, but to start to have public art programs or um, other things where we're trying to take staff time to, to do more art, I think it's going to be difficult to pursue. But again, these are priorities that are up to kind of city council and the public. And I'm, and I'm pretty sure as this moves its way through, there'll probably be some pushback that I would expect from certain folks on the, from the money side of things. We we're willing to support arts and culture, but you know, and maybe as I said, unfortunately that makes me maybe the same reason why we don't have a lot of public art in Montpelier. And, you know, we have, if we want to increase it, then we have to make it a priority and we have a lot of priorities. So, um, but a lot of this, as I said, from my standpoint is if people want to have goals, then my, my approach to this plan has been, then we have to have strategies that will accomplish those goals. If we're just going to have goals for the sake of having goals and not really try to accomplish them, then we're just wasting time. So we'll put the strategies in there. And if people go through and say, well, I'm just not willing to, to pay or support that, then we can start, you know, as we go through the public process, start to back those out. But, um, you know, I'm not willing to go to the mat for some of these to try to keep them in if the public decides they're not priorities. Um, there are some other places where I think it's very important that we prioritize like housing and um, energy and complete streets and things that I've heard year after year um, that are issues that we need to address. Yeah, so um, to, to remind everyone, this, this 1% CIP idea came from the um, it came from the arts and culture master plan and um, you know that was an approved plan so that is you know a document on the books in the city and we were just kind of piggybacking um, I'm not particularly attached to it but uh, I also feel like when it comes to public works and whether they can afford you know something out of their budget for art like I feel like there's hardly any of us that have the right amount of depth to be able to like make those kind of calls. Like for instance, I have no idea how they make decisions about when to improve sidewalks and whether, you know, money spent on that should be a priority over um, more public art or, you know, in prominent places. I just, I don't know. Um, we could, I mean, you know, it would just take speculation for us to even talk about that. Uh, yeah. So a couple of them, I mean, like the artist in residence program. I don't know if that's a, an item, but like I said, that was, that was in there. So we've continued some of those from, from that standpoint. Um, but I did, so I did go through um, by combining them. You know, obviously, if you go back to the original one, it was a long list, um, but took similar items, grouped them together um, to kind of make. Um, and some of these, like we said, a public art program, we're already doing that right now. Um, the CIP policy would be new. Um, there's been a lot. The public art program has been doing an awful lot, um, painting the side of Shaw's. So there's a lot of programs that are going on right now. And that was number two. Public art fund exists. Um, they want to explore new strategies to, to increase the amount of funding to it. Um, they want to do a public art inventory. That would be new. I think that makes sense. Uh, maintenance policy makes sense. Um, 
I didn't know what the public art donation policy was. I didn't open up the document to see what it was. Um, but that was a separately identified policy. Um, the public art master plan they want to readopt. I think we had talked a little bit about that. Um, I can I can tell you based on my recollection when, when reading the plan for number six, the um, collection management policy was uh, I think that they're just trying to adopt this. They plan to adopt a, a number of policies that that allows that commission to do its job. I think I think that that's their plan because like they're still getting off the ground. So they want to adopt policies like this collection management policy. So they have something to follow when they go to do these things. It's my understanding. Uh, okay. So yeah, we can, we can clarify what those are um, and, and clean this up a little bit, but that's where those two are from. Um, uh, the thematic art program that was to facilitate temporary art. So that goes to the second part of that second thing, those temporary art um, pop-up performances. Um, so we've, I think Montpelier Live has been doing a little bit of that, but I think they're trying to more formalize that and have that done a little bit more often. Um, the public art display policy, I don't think that's a difficult, heavy lift. That's just trying to get a policy to help get stuff set aside so we could easily be able to roll out art on public property. Um, there's the artist in residence program that I was mentioning. Um, the uh, tourism and marketing, so uh, work with various stakeholders. Um, so yeah, that would be new. I think they, that that's one we could probably flesh out and it would be probably integrated with some of the work of Montpelier Alive um, and Community Arts Service Program. I do know that the, the Community Services Department does do a lot of um, art programs, so the Senior Center and a couple others. So that's, that's really, that's why it's a continue. I know they already do those things. Um, and then there's the volunteer for art program. So we kind of crush, crunched it down to about 18 different strategies in there. They aren't prioritized. Um, we haven't really gone through to see if any of them should be shuffled out to, um, reserve i mean we did that in some other chapters to go through and say hey there are new too many strategies here to accomplish in eight years let's if we want to be strategic let's let's narrow this down to the most important things um but they're all there uh in some form and we can prioritize them and then decide costs and and i mean fortunately most of the work is being done by committee so it's a very active committee and i think as long as it remains an active committee uh, that doesn't require staff time. Uh, it's not not really taking a lot of staff effort right now to to implement most of these. Most of these are kind of coming through um, the efforts of the volunteers on that commission. Looks good to me. Um, I, I mean, as far as priority gets go, if you need help, well, a couple options. We could talk right now as planning commission to, to think of what, you know, policy, policy like, like our opinion on the, on the policy priorities. We could also try to look at the public art master plan to get ideas of, you know, make the high priority stuff, the stuff that they said they want to get done in the next two, three years. Um, what are people's thoughts about? about that so do they have that in the master plan that or the whatever it's called maybe it's not, oh yeah it is called the master plan like prioritizing mm -hmm. what they want to do in the next couple of years yeah they have a they have a timeline near the back of it uh okay. where that yeah where they do lay out what they want to get done in the short term midterm long term and so we could base our priorities off of that that makes sense to me yeah that makes sense
works for me. I can, uh, I'm gonna stop sharing. I can try to pull it up and. Because we don't need to do this now, but um, but yeah, just so you know, Mike, um, just leave it to you to to um, fill that in. Okay, so it's pages um, starting at page forty nine. Priority action plan: short term goals to adopt the master plan with committed funding from the city to begin early implementable projects and programming. So. Um, so the stuff related to initial funding and they've already done a lot of it, like as in creating the commission, um, but some of these maintenance plans, the art maintenance policy that we mentioned a minute ago is one of their short-term plans, the collection management policy the public art donation policy. That's all their short-term stuff, what they're considering high priority. They did consider the 1% for public art idea to be a high priority. Um, since uh, it seems like our attitude is going to be like, that's going to, that's for others to debate. Perhaps we can make it more of a, we don't have to set those high priority if we don't want to. Um, and then their medium term stuff. I didn't pull a lot of their longer term stuff because our, you know, this was only an eight year plan. Uh, but um, like matching grants, I don't know even know if we put that in there. Uh, collabor do the collaboration of stakeholders idea, which is something that we have, would be like a medium term thing. So a medium priority. Uh, the Montpelier cultural plan stuff is more of a medium priority for them. Um, I'm not sure if like collaborating with local schools and those ideas ended up making it in, but that was um, going to be a medium priority for them. But the volunteer program is a medium priority. And then longer term is to uh, they once again have the 1% for public arts idea in there and um, artist engagement and support. So in a nutshell, that's just briefly me summarizing through the priorities that they set. So I think we've got stuff in there and we can kind of see how the debate goes. You know, they can always go through and recommend, like we've kind of taken out some of the individual, you know, the, we've kind of have public art and then we've got the art institutions that we're helping, but not really getting to the level of individually helping artists. Um, and I, I think that will be, you know, something they may want. I, I just don't know. You know, it's one of these ones that I, I sit back and think as, you know, as, as government, where, where do we begin? Where do we end? Um, you know, collaborating with the school to make sure the school has good art programs. Is that the job of city hall? I don't know. Um, I'd be more likely to say that's probably not. I mean, it's important and it's good, but you know, if the committee wants to take it upon themselves to try to work with the schools, that's that's I guess that's that's good. Um, but I think it gets more problematic when you're trying to support individual artists. Uh, that's going to be a little bit trickier. Um, but I think again, that's I think that's, every that's fair. Every place can figure it out. We've we've far, we've targeted in this plan, public art, you know, 
how we manage, how we get more, how we maintain, how we take care of public art. A second tier is how do we help those uh, groups and institutions? Um, you know, uh, we've got the arts on Barry Street. We've got um, we've we also have a bunch of studios, uh, theaters. We've got a lot of those. How can we support those? And we've kind of left the artists themselves off of our plan. But I think the the arts commission can certainly come in and argue. Nope, we need a third aspiration and an aspiration to support artists themselves. And great if that's where the city council and community wants to go. This is their plan, not necessarily my plan or our plan. Um, we're drafting it, obviously, but they they will ultimately make the decision on it. So, I, th I think that's fair. And and you know, there's other chapters too where we have to make that call. You know. Um, when you were talking about public safety, for instance, it's like not everything public safety related is going to be planning related. So, you know, I, I imagine we'd have to make a call there too about, about what's appropriate for the urban planning aspect of that. So that seems, that's fair. And I, yeah, I'm, I'm fine with, um, we like, like the, the way that the current state of it, Mike, just just to clarify, is that we're leaving, you know, strategies out that would that would be specific to individuals, right? Yeah, for the most part, we did. I did end up leaving in the strategy about the artist in residence, um, but a number, or not a number, there were there were a few others that there was an aspiration about supporting artists and that didn't have a lot of strategies to go with it. So that was one of the reasons why it kind of dropped. You know, I don't exactly know if there was a, you know, a, a private artist living in town, what we as government can do to support individual artists in their, you know, in their work, other than trying to make, venues and places available for them to display and show their art, whether it's, you know, whether it's dance, whether it's uh, paint, whether it's sculpture, whatever that art is, we provide opportunities for people to show that art. But I really mm -hmm. didn't get into how to support the artists themselves. Um, I mean, the one area where I think it is appropriate to have in the plan is when we talk about the art classes, which I, I noticed that's still in there. I think that that's analogous to setting aside land for outdoor recreation, which we have in the plan, and then setting aside space for courses and, you know, art development. You know, I feel like those are like, those are similar things. So I, that's, that's the only area where I have a, a kind of an opinion on that. And I figured I was going to leave that in because it's something we do already. Um, if it was going to be an ask to add something to the community services department, I probably would have pushed back a little bit more. But the fact that we already do it um, kind of makes me go through and say, well, let's let's pat ourselves on the back for doing it. Let's put it in there about all the things that we do, because we do a lot for art. Uh, City Hall, you know, the main gallery in City Hall behind me um, is an artist gallery. Uh, we sponsor for free Lost Nation Theater. They don't pay any rent to to, to have Lost Nation Theater upstairs. Um, and I, you know, the, as a city, we do a lot to support artists. Um, and we should pat ourselves on the back for the things that we do well. And obviously, there are things that we haven't done well. And those are the things we're trying to address through this new plan. Anybody have any uh, follow up, or are we happy for? Mike to finish it up and um, yeah, Mike and I'll communicate later about just putting a chapter together, but sounds like we have a pretty good idea of how we're going to do that too. Just using the existing um, language. Okay. Anybody have anything else about this before we go on? Thanks a lot, Mike. We already talked about the upcoming meeting number eight, the upcoming meeting with the uh, historic preservation 
um, committee. Uh, so that's going to be October 24th. And all we have left to do is to consider the minutes. So folks could take a look at the July, I think it's July 25th minutes. Yeah. Um, yeah, I looked at them before I move approval of the minutes. Yeah, pretty short. It's a pretty short meeting. Summer's been summer's been pretty light. Do we have a we have a motion for Marianne to uh, approve the minutes? Do we have a second? Second. We have a second from Aaron. Uh, okay. Um, let me know if anyone needs more time. Okay. Those uh, in favor of approving the July 25th minutes, say aye. 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 None opposed. Minutes approved. And all we have left to do is to adjourn at our next meeting, Mike, though, um, just so folks have an idea. Or, um, would it be possible to have us review and vote or, or just review? Maybe we're not at the point to vote on any of those um, chapters uh, that you mentioned that uh, are, are done, but we haven't moved on. Would that be possible for the next meeting? Yep, I'll try to get at least one on so we can get that one through. Okay, great. Looks like we're in the home stretch in the city plan, which is kind of wild. Yeah, I think it'll be a little bit more interesting once we're sitting here with, uh, you know, up on our screens with the actual chapters in, you know, in the online format and we can kind of go through and kind of make final approvals of what we think we want the plan to, you know, finally look like. Um, so that'll be good. Yeah, yeah, that's going to be wild. All right, well, do we have a motion to adjourn? Move to adjourn. Yeah. Second. Motion from Marianne, second from Aaron. She was split second ahead. Uh, those in favor of adjournment, say aye. 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 All right, see you guys in two weeks. Thanks. Have a good night. Thanks, have a great night. Thank